Hey everyone, this is Mike from Comic Book Trove here today with another Omnibus review. And today I'm going to take a look at something a little bit different because this is one of Marvel's villain-centric omnibuses. This is the Loki Omnibus Volume 1, which collects the earliest Silver Age appearances of Loki in issues of mainly Journey into Mystery and Thor, plus a couple of other things as well. I want to just give an overview of this book today, kind of showcase it, discuss it a little bit, just to maybe clarify what it is, do you need it if you've already got other Thor omnibuses? Um, and, you know, just kind of flick through, give some thoughts, maybe give you that insight, hopefully. Um, but I do like the design of the book, one thing I've got to really praise it for. I think this is a really nice looking book. This um, cover on the front, the standard variant, is a piece of original artwork by Mark Brooks, done specifically for this omnibus, and I think that's a really cool image. Um, the spine and the back of the book as well got this nice kind of... Um, magical mystical green color and uh, kind of wavy pattern and the whole thing is kind of presented like an old kind of scroll looks really cool and then uh, we've got your cover gallery so it's a titanic tome of trickery and as i say it's a lot of that silver age classic material from the early to mid 60s lots of journey into mystery thor you got avengers number one in here silver surfer number four a couple of other things you know you got your uh, full contents down there if you want to pause take a look at that um but yeah, so as I've touched upon, um, you can't really skate around the fact that this double dips a whole lot with the uh, Mighty Thor omnibuses. The Silver Age Thor omnibuses, there are three of those that have been released so far. Volume 1 just recently having been reprinted. Um, and a lot of the stuff that's in here is in that book and those other two volumes. Um, this hardcover wraparound, though, as I say, the design of the book, can't fault it. It's really nice, stands out in this awesome green, obviously green being Loki's kind of key colour. Um, and it's made up of a, a kind of collage of, of classic panels from the comics collected in here. It looks really cool. A lot of Jack Kirby artwork, of course. And we'll take a look inside. So we've got these um, dark greenish bookend pages as well. So the green theme is very strong. Got classic Loki splash page there. Um, so main creators then, as I say, so it's a lot of the classic Thor material. So it's Stan Lee with Larry Lieber doing some of the writing on there. Um, pencilers including Jack Kirby. He's the guy you're going to see the most artwork from in here. We've got Joe Sinnott, John Buscema, Neil Adams even, um, Steve Ditko, Maurice Severin, um, just a lot of other people who contributed to some of the other various things that we see collected in here. Um, the contents, this is really nice looking again, that kind of scroll pattern going on. And then we jump in with uh, Journey, into Mystery, Journey into Mystery, 85, um, collecting, thought, uh, goodness me, I'm all over the place, Loki's first appearance in here, which was, I think, the third appearance of Thor as well. Um, so a very early issue. It's uh, classic Stan, Larry Lieber, Jack Kirby stuff. Um, but yeah, so to just kind of skirt back a second here, the material in here is very much double dipping with those three Thor omnibuses. You've got to get that out of the way because it's the elephant in the room really with this omnibus I suppose. If you have those books or any of them or plan to get them because you are more of a completionist and you want to have the full kind of Thor experience from this era then realistically you can probably skip this book. If you're not a huge Silver Age fan you don't want to commit to potentially buying three Thor omnibuses um, you maybe just want to get a taste of what Thor comics were like in this time and Loki is your favourite character, then this is pretty much perfect for that purpose. And I feel that's got to be the main audience that it was put together um, and, and really kind of who it's aimed at for, you know. So here's that Avengers number one. This is a cool, this is a cool issue. I like Avengers number one as a comic. I think it's really good. Um, very dated, obviously, but a cool idea where Loki's scheming against Thor and inadvertently ends up uniting the Avengers for the first time. Classic stuff. Um, but yeah, and obviously primarily we're looking at Thor comics though. Um, what, so what you're getting, it's, it's kind of a compilation in a way, but it's also um, not, because it is a complete sort of reading order, early reading order for Loki. So you'll go through a couple of issues of, of Journey into Mystery, two or three issues, sometimes more than that, depending on the story arc. And then you jump forward ahead another five or ten issues or however much until the next time Loki showed up. So it might feel a little disjointed because, you know, inevitably there are gaps between those issues. So the, the greater story that was being told for Thor himself 
you're not getting all of that here. You're just getting Loki's schemes. You know, Loki goes away. Thor does X, Y, and Z for a few issues, and then Loki came back, and that's where you jump back in here. So you have to kind of look at it from a different perspective. It's not reading Thor, you're reading Loki. And you may or may not be used to reading comics like that. I typically don't. I usually just read chronologically through all the issues. Don't really jump ahead to follow a specific character. So reading through this, bit of a different experience to, you know, um, focus on a supporting character or a villain in this case, rather than the main hero, the protagonist. Um, but yeah, I mean, I spoke about uh, some of this material already when I talked about the recent reprint of Mighty Thor Omnibus Volume 1. So if you haven't checked out my review on that and you want to hear me talk about some of these early Thor comics in more detail, then feel free to go ahead and and check that one out. But uh, I just kind of want to talk about what this book is, really. That's why I've not touched on the stories themselves in too much detail, because... I know that this is one of those books that people kind of just ask, do I need that? So I just wanted to put the facts out, give you an idea of what it looks like, make you aware of the fact that there is a lot of double dipping with other omnibuses. Um, but it's just a cool idea. I think, like I say, it's, it's a nice idea to have these villain-centric books for people who don't want to go and follow three or four omnibuses to collect 10 plus years worth of material. I don't know, like I'm hugely into Marvel Silver Age anyway, so I've got the Thor books, I've got this, you know. It's all good to me, but it's not gonna be for everybody. Hopefully though, this gives you an idea of maybe whether or not this one's for you. And do let me know what you think of it and what you think of this uh, recent trend of Marvel doing these villain-centric books. Um, whether you want them to continue, whether you're a fan, if you just think they shouldn't bother. Happy to hear the different opinions. I know they're doing another one, similar idea with Doctor Doom. Calling it the Book of Doom Omnibus, I think. Again, just similar idea of, as this. It's going to collect various issues of Fantastic Four and whatever else he's appeared in. But, yeah, I think overall it's a nice thing to do. Even if it's maybe a, quite a niche audience, perhaps, that it appeals to. I don't know. Just thinking aloud, I'm just not quite sure how much of an appeal this has compared to other omnibuses. Just because of the fact that it double dips, that's the key thing. Keep coming back to it, but it's the, the key thing that is is just kind of hanging over this one a little bit. But I tell you what, I look through these stories, it does just kind of make me want to read Thor again. Like I'm happy to read through these stories. This is a good book to pick up, like I say, when you just don't want to to read Massive chunks, I guess, of Silver Age comics, Thor specifically. But Thor was a fun series, you know, like, and, and Loki's early stories are a lot of fun. So I think this book's great for that. And Loki's really just one of the most iconic villains, isn't he, really, from Marvel in particular. One of the, the major villains is up there with Doom and Magneto as one of the all-time greats. My opinion, at least, anyway. This issue of Silver Surfer, really classic stuff. Glad that's in here as well. Um, beautiful artwork in here by John Buscema, inked by Sal Buscema. This is in the Silver Surfer on the bus. I've also covered that book as well. But I really like the artwork that um, Buscema was doing on this series. Really cool stuff. And a really cool story. You know, really kind of just one of those great kind of one and done stories. Um, this was when Silver Surfer was, uh, I think, like double length issues as well. So it's about 40 pages, this story. And it's all cool, you know. Silver Surfer and Thor, Loki tricks them into fighting pretty much and then they realise it's Loki and they turn against him. But at the end of the day, you know, these are Silver Age comics so there's a lot of kind of repetitive things going on, you know. They're not exactly the strongest stories and Loki's not really the complex villain that he would go on to become, as is the case with a lot of villains when you go back to these early days. They're quite uh, two-dimensional, really. You know, they've often just got a singular, simple motive as to why they want to bring down the hero. 
but I just think Loki kind of stood out from the beginning because of his, uh, you know, the magical element to the character. You know, he's, he's a sorcerer, a god. So plenty of uh, supernatural possibilities were were there for uh, Stan and Jack and other creators to exploit and tell some quirky stories with. And obviously a loaded classic Jack Kirby artwork and then some John Buscema as well. I know that I think around this time was when Buscema came in, still Jack Kirby at this point, I think shortly after this though. can't remember exactly what issue it was that Kirby left the book for Thor. Maybe about 180 something I think. And then Buscema took over. But yeah, interesting stuff. Um, something very different, certainly, these whole villain books. Whether or not, I suppose, you uh, think it's for you. Well, it's just going to down, come down to personal preference, but let's take a look at what extras we've got in the back here. Uh, an original version of Cover Here for Journey into Mystery 88 by Jack Kirby. Pretty cool, from like unused covers and pencils. That's really cool. Marvel Treasury Edition cover, Jack Kirby. Not a huge amount of extras in the back here. Got some different um, recolored covers that have been used for trade paperbacks and omnibuses. And there's that uh, Mark Brooks cover. We get on the standard just jacket here for the book. So, yeah. Um, Overall, an interesting book to have, as I say, again, if you're interested purely in the early beginnings of Loki, or don't want to read a huge amount of Thor, um, a book that I can't really recommend unless you fall into that category, really. I don't think if, if you would rather just read all of Thor, then you're really better off just getting the Thor omnibuses, picking up volume one, which you can get now, hoping for a volume two reprint like myself, because I need that to fill the gap between one and three. Um, but yeah, as I say, if you're just not a massive Silver Age fan and you just think that this would do it for you, this would be sufficient, this would fill any desire you've got to read early Thor comics, then absolutely go for it. I will say that the design of the book is certainly a lot cooler than the uh, standard Silver Age omnibuses with those plain black um, designs. So this certainly stands out a lot more than the Thor omnibuses in that sense. Um, but yeah, overall, an interesting book to have. A book that I am happy to have in my collection because, you know, I'm happy to read through um, just a Loki reading order that's presented and collected in this way. But I know it won't be for everybody, so let me know your thoughts on it, whether or not you're going to uh, pick it up or skip it. Always nice to hear the opinions of others. But thanks, as always, for watching this. And uh, I'll be back again soon to discuss something else.